user experience is a very critical part for acceptance of a dashboard. Often users expect an application-like experience when interacting with your reports. Controls like drop-downs, toggles or buttons should behave the same way users are familiar with from so many other applications they use on a daily basis. In a tool based on dimensional modeling like Power BI, this might become an issue at first glance when using slices. Let's take a closer look. So what's the problem? In our simple data model we have a fact table containing some business transaction concerning sales and we have two dimension tables, the periods and regions according to which we want to analyze our sales data. Now, it normally is the case that fact tables are sparse while dimension tables are not, meaning that the region table contains all conceivable regions and the periods table contains all dates of a year while there might not be sales in the fact table for a specific combination of dates and or regions. This might lead to a situation in which users playing around with the data and face a slicer selection with no sales available resulting in a blank report. This is considered to be poor user guidance and can be resolved in different ways, for example by showing zero values or some messages instead of blanks or restricting the slicer items to only show valid combinations. Although using bidirectional cross-filtering in Power BI might be a way to enforce display of valid slicer combinations, this approach is not recommended for numerous reasons. Instead, we will go with a solution utilizing the visual level filter capabilities of Power BI. The idea is to create a filter criteria that filters all the slices to only show items for which sales are existing. This filter criteria should be dependent on the selection in other filters or visuals. A measure is what will enable us to do that. There are several ways this can be achieved. As our criteria is the existence of sales for a specific item of the slicer, we can simply start by counting the rows within the sales table. This will give us the number of sales transactions in a given filter context. We can then simply include a test to check whether this expression returns blank, leading to a return value of true in case there are no sales transactions in the given filter context and false if there are some. We can then drag the measure to the visual filters of all our slicers and set the test criteria to equals false, which means that the slicer is filtered to only show items for which the measure is not blank, in other words, for which there are sales transactions in the fact table. And that's it. Now we have cascading slices that prevent the users from selecting items for which there are no sales to spot. I hope this will help you to create even more professional reports for your users. I would appreciate if you could support this channel by subscribing and would be happy to welcome you back to my next video. Till then, stay healthy, stay safe and goodbye from Hamburg.